Hey, good morning, guys. This is Taiba Hasakicks.com, and today I wanted to squeeze in a quick video for the Jordan 6 DMP. And partly because the shoe is probably one of my favorite from Jordan Brain, so I kind of felt like, well, you know what, let me do one on it. Um, so it originally came out in 2006 as a package with the 11s, and the package included all kind of extras. He had a booklet, he had the slide out boxes, the gold tags, and everything, and I actually wrote an article. Uh, that was like a couple of years ago to compare that package to the uh, to the 13 and 14 package that came out and it wasn't close to it like this was just incredible an incredible package well executed this is the box that he came in with all Michael Jordan uh, actions him in action on the court dunking and, and layup and all that kind of stuff so it came as a package and he had like these gold tags the booklet it was just complete like it was incredible and it was only $300 this was probably one of the best packages from Jordan Brain, and I don't think anything can top it off. So Nike decided to bring it back again in keeping with the edit to amplify because they know that people want it and they know that when they bring it out, people are gonna want it. So they're gonna make them and they're gonna, I'm, I'm sure the 11 is gonna come out at some point. So I'm sure that's gonna happen. Now, for those who don't know what it looks like, it's uh, an all black shoe with gold on the accent on the, near the midsole here and at the bottom outside of the tongue uh and this extension you have on the ice there you have the gold jump band gold on the back uh top here and a little bit of gold um i think that's it so i had a pair uh back i guess that was in 2011 that i bought from a friend of mine and the jump the jump man was upside down i wish i had kept it i didn't keep the shoe so i should have kept it it was cool now i'm sure there's like the fake ones are already out and actually let me show you this website that has the fake one this guy he already has a fake one so you have to be careful I'm, i don't think i'm going to write the comparison between the fake and the authentic but this morning i just want to talk about how many pairs could be potentially made so quickly show you where not to get it from okay but let's let's go in and i'm going to show you my presentation and after that we're going to i'm going to show you the fake one and you need to be careful so how many pairs could be made now things have changed since the coronavirus a lot of things have changed so uh companies are now operating like solely online through their e-commerce shop so things are going to be totally different so again like when i ran my investigations uh i didn't want to go up and find out how many people are getting it. i'm not going to waste my time doing that so i just went ahead and i will, I will use like Foot Locker's uh, information to try to come up with a feasible uh, number. Okay, so Foot Locker and Foot Foot Action and Champs are Nike's closest uh, longtime partner. So I'm always using that information to create my assumptions. So we already know that the shoe is going to be a general release. So that means basically everyone is going to get it. And, but now the thing is, this is going to be online. So how do you come up with a, a feasible? And a believable estimate how do you do that so i created some assumptions and i'm going to show you what i created uh there are close to like a thousand foot locker stores and 272 foot actions and 547 champs store so the way i'm going to set up my assumption is this i'm going to assume that nike will acquire about a quarter of the production and then foot locker foot action and champs and east bay will receive also a quarter and finish line and everybody else is going to get a half of the rest of it okay so now I'm gonna give Foot Locker 24 pairs per store, 18 for Foot Action and 18 for Champs. And then we're gonna give their online allocation a third of the total the physicals are getting. Now the thing is this, the physical stores allocation is gonna be converted to the online store. So for, but for the sake of creating uh, a physical, a good number, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna assume and then work as if the physical stores were still operating. Okay, and then we're gonna also assign about a third to East Bay. And then we're gonna run our numbers from here. So when I ran my numbers for Foot Locker, if I assumed that the stores were getting it, it was 24,000 pairs because I did 24 times 1,000. And for Foot Action, 20, 272 times 18 came up to 48.96, let's say 5,000 pairs. And then for uh, Champs, you can see on, on my screen here, 547, 547 times 18, I got 98.46. And the total from the three entities was uh, 38,742. Now, the extras, when I say extras, I mean the online allocation. 
that was 12,914 because I, I did this number and I took it and divided it by three. And then for East Bay, I did another division by three. Okay, and then at the end, you add all these things together, you get up to 55,961. And to get the grand total for North America, you just do 55,961 times four, which is 223,000. 223,844 and I took it up to 225,000. You can double that number if you consider the rest of the world and end up with a total production between 300,000 and 450,000 pairs. I don't think that's far-fetched. I think that's pretty, uh, that's that's uh, um, a good number, plausible, you know, so I'm not gonna say, well, this is stretching it too much. But I also wanna make sure you know my, my disclaimer, I don't work for the brain. I don't work for any of these people. So I just pretty much just compile the numbers and then throw up uh, throw some assumptions there and, and then I come up with my numbers to just give you an idea of what's going on here. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is the resale. I didn't want to waste too much time on it. So I, I found the average uh, versus time. So I took my data from Monday to like Wednesday and this is what I came up with. On Monday, the averages were 245. On Tuesday, were 248. And today so far is 251. So it's a slightly increase, you know, like a little, the increment is not that big, like three, Three dollars every day. Three dollars from two, uh, from from Monday to like Tuesday, and another three dollars from Tuesday to Wednesday. This is the average per day, okay. And then I did the average, and you can see I added a line there to show you that this is slightly increasing. And I did the average per size. Now with with the outliers, uh, it was two forty eight, and without the outliers, it was two forty seven. And if you look at it, pretty much. This is the distribution here. You can see that it's, it's going between 239 to like 350. So bigger sizes, sizes 14, 16, maybe 13, are gonna go for higher. And then sizes that are a little bit harder to get like 11 and a half, 10 and a half, 10 and a half is pretty common, are gonna be like uh, a little bit higher. But uh, if you, I make some, I made some observations here. The set of outliers are 205, 287, 336, and 315. Now the average value is about 248. And without the outlier is about 247, which isn't much of a difference. So the best sizes to acquire obviously are gonna be like bigger sizes, 14 and above. And it makes perfect sense because those are scarce uh, sizes. Now the shoe's gonna sell out, that's for sure. But as far as profit is concerned, like you're, gonna, you're looking at profit between $10 and $20 for common sizes, like anything eight, nine, 10, 11 and all that. And the markup are like 5% to 10%. And then sizes 14 and 16, they yield to the best margins at $33 and $106. And you're looking at markup between 15, 56% and 15.24%. So there you have it, folks. It's not, it's not much. I just wanted to squeeze the same real quick. I wasn't trying to take too much time. So you can go back and, and you know, you, the shoe's going to sell out. That's just for sure because people want it and I actually want a pair, but I'm not going to get it because my priority has I've changed for, for some time now and I'm not really... Too crazy about these sneakers anymore it's just not it doesn't have an eternal value for me so i'm not really it's just to me it's just i like looking at them but i'm not crazy about it i don't really care much about it honestly now but i do want to warn you about the fake ones because i know there are fake ones so this is the fake one they, they've been out for a long time i didn't get a chance to do a real versus fake but this is the fake one here and the box looks funny. You can see the lines here. It's just a dead giveaway. Dead giveaway. And the back. Look at the back of the shoe here. It's it's too stiff. You see, if you look at the one on Nike, see how the curve. There's a curve down there. You see that curve. On the fake one, there's no curve. You see, it's just like straight vertical line. So those are the things you need to be careful of. And since I don't have like an, a pair on my hand to do a, a side by side, uh, usually you you have to also look at the the holes here usually the holes here is like always misaligned so you have to be careful with that i don't have a uh, an authentic pair of hands so I, I can't tell you anything anymore besides this but the biggest takeaway is this nike has made a lot of changes and i'm going to go on my website and show you what i'm talking about uh let, let me show you here uh that's that's where you can authenticate your your own shoe from home it's really easy easy things you can do to like authenticate your own sneakers I wrote a, an article uh, that was like a, a few months ago to show you. Now, again, Nike has started with the RFID and QR code, right? The QR code is not really a good thing because they can copy this and just paste it on the back so you won't know because even if you scan it, 
is still going to show that this is going to Nike because the QR code is meant to take you to Nike to shop. But the RFID is the hardest thing that uh, a lot of fake ones, fake shoes, will not be able to duplicate because the RFID, they can create a, a, a fake one, but it's the RFID behind the label. If you see it, there's a little bump here. Behind the label, there's like a, a little chip, and in that chip is all the information of the shoe everything about the shoe where it was created and all this kind of stuff and you need there's an antenna it connects with uh the rfid reader to tell you the provenance of the shoe so if you happen to have an rfid reader you can actually authenticate your shoe but that's also difficult because uh somebody could put a fake shoe in a box so how would you tell so these are the things that i wanted to warn you about but you know again use your common sense if it's too good to be true then it's fake you know don't 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 waste the time and i don't think i'm gonna do a real versus fake if I find someone that does a comparison that's good, I'm gonna put it on the website and let you know about it, all right? Now, as far as like buying them, uh, I'm gonna give you some links on my website where you can buy them uh, from uh, authentic uh, sellers and all that kind of stuff. Okay, thanks for watching again. This is Ty from Master Kicks and stay tuned for more stuff.